Since I was a kid, I've always had a very profound interest in the passage of time. It just seems so sad that lifetimes of family photographs would just be thrown away and sometimes never seen again. I happened to be in a uh, a shop in San Francisco in the Mission, and I was speaking with a shop owner uh, because he has all these bins of old photographs and. I asked them where they came from because there were some pretty fascinating photos that seemed to be displaced from different families. And he kept explaining how uh, if a family bloodline ends, he would buy the entire photo collection from the, from the family estate. And uh, I was saddened by this. So when I got back to DC, I started researching and buying collections of photographs, just like this gentleman did in San Francisco. And uh, just developed a very strong interest in rebuilding my view of someone's life and breathing life back into into some of these images that would otherwise be thrown away. Typically I like to live with the photographs for three to six months before I even start working with them. Uh, I categorize them uh, and study the subjects and sometimes I even have photographs or family photo collections that start in the mid-1800s and run through the 1940s or 1950s. Once I actually uh, start developing relationships with some of my subjects, I start developing my own ideas about their personalities, what they did for a living, maybe some of the hardships they went through in their lifetime. And that's, how, that's kind of how I hone in on the subject matter. Um, I'll scan the images in, I have a high resolution scanner. So I scan the images, uh, I do a lot of digital paint in the computer and I alter the photographs, uh, then print them, on large format paper or canvas, uh, wrap them on panels and begin painting. Most of the computer work is very uh, calculated and programmed because I have to set up my compositions, but when it comes to painting, uh, it's definitely more intuitive. And that's when I feel like I really start bringing out more of the personality of my subject matter. I'm working on a body of work uh, for a solo show in Atlanta, and it's called Within These Walls. And the work is inspired by abandoned homesteads that I used to play in when I was a small child. I grew up in a rural area outside of St. Louis, Missouri. And my friends and I used to play in these old Victorian homes that were literally falling apart. So the inspiration comes from the deconstruction of the home, uh, the unearthing of a, the skeleton of a home, uh, and more of what happened within the walls of the home. Not necessarily the, even though I use the tangibles like the the idea of the rust from metals and copper gutters uh, or decaying wood, Victorian patterns on the walls. That may be my visual, but the visual is only used to drive uh, emotions and to make the viewer wonder what happened in the home. But a, a lot of the, like what makes the work is what happens just like in a very natural process. Like sometimes I like leaving these things that just drip and run. I so have to leave this alone and let it dry and just keep working on it stages. So I'll set this aside and start working on another piece. So a lot of times when I paint or when I work with these images, like this is the original of the, the girl the three girls sitting on the lawn, I remove a lot of the original image, the background. I take away what makes the feeling or the emotion in, in a photograph. And I sort of hone in on just the subject matter or what I want the viewer to experience or see. So I feel like sometimes I need to add things back in. I'll add some words or sometimes lyrics of songs, poems, things that just come to mind to give the viewer a hint of what I want the viewer to think that this person's life may have been like. I'm a mixed media artist, so I like to use a lot of uh, different materials. And I, I used actually some fairly unorthodox artist materials. Um, I used a lot of, of ground up, very fine metals in my piece. And I use these, uh, they're actually chemicals that can oxidize the metal quickly within literally 10, 15 minutes. I like to paint on top of it with acrylics, uh, and I work my, ways, my way up, and I work in layers. It's really difficult for me to start and finish one piece, like, uh, or one piece at a time. So I have a mixture of uh, acrylic paint, Conti crayon, oil crayons, and uh, graphite, 
uh, colored pencils. After paint, the painting process, they uh, go downstairs into my resin room and I pour anywhere from like an eighth inch to a half inch uh, thick coat of very glossy resin on top of the photograph. I like the shininess. Uh, these pieces actually look like they were dipped in glass when they're finished. And I like the juxtaposition from taking something that was very old and weathered and decaying and turning it into a very new shiny modern object and very much breathing life back into the person. The subject matter, uh, sometimes even if it's just a portrait or uh, a collection of people, they may have been family members or, rel or some type of relatives, Sometimes I see beyond just the photo. I, I like to make the, the viewer's experience dip more into the hardships from the family. In fact, my last show, people were leaving, describing the work as very haunting. Um, but I like that because I think there is something very haunting about some of these old photographs and also where it can take your mind, wondering what lived within the walls of someone's home. Uh, the experiences. Did someone die in, the, in this house? Did somebody get married? Or what kind of what kind of problems did they go face in their lives? Because there are things in the photographs, uh, whether it's a little trinket or something with fashion, that makes me feel profoundly removed from that period of time. So I want the viewer to feel immediately feel that when they first see these images. I think failure is actually really important in the art, in the creative process, but uh, I also would describe it more about uh, trial and error and taking risks because if you don't fail on a piece, you don't learn and you don't push yourself to explore uh, new ways or develop new ideas of how to get to what you were originally trying to get to if you failed getting to that destination uh, before. So uh, I may work on pieces for months sometimes and then when it comes to pouring resin on top of something, I have one shot to get it right. And if I fail, I have to start over from scratch. So it really pushes me to make sure I know and understand my craft. And uh, the technical importance of what I'm doing has to be very refined. So I, don't, I think if you don't uh, fail, you don't take risks, uh, you don't evolve within your own creativity.